What's going on everyone? Welcome to this video. So Scoob is out. It is out in the world. Well, in the US and Canada. I am so sorry to everyone else. Okay, so this is going to be my spoiler free review of Scoob. I will have a spoiler full review coming shortly after for those that have seen it, but this one is more or less for the people that have not seen Scoob, but are wondering kind of what I thought of the movie and uh, kind of what, you know, they can maybe expect when they do eventually watch the movie. So Scoob released this past weekend on May 15th. It went to video on demand as hopefully you guys know did not go to theaters because of the current situation in the world uh, but I can strongly strongly say that this still watching it at home still is a definite theatrical Scooby-Doo movie this is not just another direct-to-video Scooby-Doo movie that we get you know probably two at least a year this does not feel like that whatsoever this has a theatrical Scooby-Doo feel to it all the way okay so I loved the animation in this it was just like oh my goodness the animation in this I I seriously want a series animated like this like a scooby-doo series animated like this now it is beautiful animation very vibrant very just oh colors are just so bright and but it's really cool because there is a sequence that i'm sure you guys have seen because it's not totally a spoiler but there is a sequence kind of at the beginning of the film that is a total callback to the original Scooby-Doo. And so they actually put back the color palette of the original series. And so, you know, it's a little more toned down, a little not as vibrant as the rest of the movie. And I thought that was really fun. Also, the, the animation is a bit more stiff in that sequence compared to the rest of the movie too. Again, a complete callback to the original series which was really cool okay so something we have to realize with this movie is that this is supposed to be starting a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe you know more so along the lines of like Marvel and DC and so if you've read or seen some reviews uh, the problem is a lot of the reviewers and critics unfortunately don't know that that is the purpose of this movie to start this Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe and so while yes we kind of were going in for a Scooby-Doo movie it is not totally a like solid Scooby-Doo movie yes it revolves more so around Scooby-Doo but in the long run, it's more so introducing Scooby-Doo as like this big mystery solving group. But now they're also introducing all these other characters to the world, honestly, again, because it's been so long since we've seen Blue Falcon, Dynamut, Captain Caveman, Dick Dastardly. And so, again, while yes, it is portrayed more as a Scooby-Doo movie. It really is more of like a start of a Hanna-Barbera universe. Again, that's that's its purpose. That is its purpose. And that's why this movie is called Scoob. It The name fits the movie. It makes sense why it's called Scoob once you watch it. Okay, so as the story goes overall, I actually enjoyed the story. Uh, there wasn't a huge mystery to solve there was a mystery but it kind of got solved really fast i will say that it was a little more so like oh there's a villain and we gotta like get to this goal before them or we have to stop them from getting to, to said goal uh but there was still a mystery aspect 
And that's kind of where Fred, Daphne, and Velma's role came in in the film. Now, one thing I keep seeing people sit and say and criticize the movie for is that there's not Fred, Daphne, and Velma, like, enough in the movie, which, okay, I... I So going into this movie from what people had said from reading the junior novelization, I honestly was going in thinking that Daphne, Fred, and Velma were just like going to be almost cut from the whole movie, that we like weren't going to see them like ever. But honestly, I feel like they were very well balanced. I feel like they had way more screen time than anybody is giving credit for them. Because, again, I went to this movie from what people had told me, feeling like they were just going to be at the beginning and the end. But no, they had, honestly, a really cool and interesting part in this movie. And yes, it did kind of turn into a Shaggy and Scooby adventure. Again, Fred, Daphne, and Velma had the mystery aspect of this movie. And so that was really, really cool to see the two different stories kind of come together in the end. I honestly really enjoyed it, and although I don't always enjoy the Shaggy and Scooby misadventure type stories, I feel like this one, again, really balanced out the Fred, Daphne, and Velma and the Shaggy and Scooby different stories going on. I feel like it, it balanced them out really well. That's just my own opinion. Now, without giving spoilers of this specific part, uh, I will say that I enjoyed Captain Caveman's role in this film. I do honestly wish he had more screen time i wish we could have seen more of him but i really think that they utilized kind of introducing this character to this hanna barbera cinematic world very well you know we were kind of introduced to him and now it's more so okay we we know this character exists now let's hopefully give him his own movie and really get to know this character. It gave you enough introduction to this character that you honestly are just like, wait, I want more of this character. I loved Captain Caveman. I loved when he said his, you know, iconic Captain Caveman. He did his jump up and said his name and they animated him with his hair all frizzled and whatever. Like in the original cartoons, it was so cool to see really enjoyed that that's all i'm gonna say about captain caveman to keep it spoiler free okay so we were told in the movie that the blue falcon that we see in the movie is actually the original blue falcon's son brian now this is not a spoiler because this clip is released online so if you didn't know that i am sorry and actually dynamut if you've seen the trailers seen the clips you know, Dino Mutt has different personality than from his original cartoons. Now, in the Apple exclusive behind the scenes special feature, uh, the director actually explains kind of why Dino Mutt has this different personality now, and he's not very clumsy. Uh, and it's because since now we're seeing Brian take over the role of Blue Falcon, the original Blue Falcon, Falcon had done his job, you know, maybe 50 plus years. And so Dynama had, you know, at least maybe like 30 or so years of modifications, of updates, of upgrades and whatever. And that's why his voice has changed too, because, you know, the different technology, the different, you know, just upgrades and everything kind of changed and helped him. And so Blue Falcon was originally clumsy. He looked like the original cartoon version that we're used to but now throughout the years with all of his upgrades and changes they've been able to get him ma maintained you know get him the maintenance so he isn't very clumsy anymore and he's able to do all these different capabilities and help out in the adventures now now i will say without spoiling anything we actually do get to see dynama have kind of like a you know clumsy kind of bumbly type of moment now, there is a reason to that, you know, it's not necessarily his fault, I'll say, but it was cool to kind of see a callback to the original cartoons of Dynama, you know, being kind of like, whoopsie, you know, it was cool. It was a cool moment, and it made sense how it happened within the movie, that's all I'll say. Okay, I have to say that I 
loved the these versions of Fred, Daphne, and Velma. They were so much fun. You know, they felt like the gang, but like, you know, just obviously some little tweaks. Fred is definitely nowadays Fred where he loves his van. He's kind of, you know, a blonde, so to speak. Uh, and Daphne, oh my gosh, Daphne honestly is probably my favorite. <laughs> Daphne is just so sweet, and but she's like so... She did have her danger-prone moments, but there's one scene in particular that... Well, okay, there's two scenes, but there's one scene in particular where I was like, oh my gosh, she's just like, she totally cares about the gang, you know? She's like, I can't say it, but oh my gosh, when you guys watch it, oh, it is one of my, one of my favorite scenes, and I was just like, you know, Daphne, yeah, you, you take over the roles while they're, they're gone, you know? Like, that's all I'll say, because that's, might be spoiling it already, but... I just loved her. I loved her in this movie. <laughs> now, Velma did get to be kind of sassy and whatever, and honestly, Velma's voice, you know, Gina Rodriguez was my, the one I was most concerned about, honestly, just throughout the trailers. It wasn't, it just wasn't clicking with me through the trailers, but now watching the movie, oh my goodness, can we have Gina Rodriguez voice Velma now? Like, please. She is great at it. She uh, gave me, Mindy Cohn vibes, uh, you know, as she, as the movie went on, uh, it just, she, she had these sassy moments and it was great and, you know? <laughs> okay, now Fred, again, like I said, he's kind of the blonde, he's kind of still in love with the, the mystery machine, which is awesome. Uh, now I will say, again, without spoiling, the ascot does come in to the movie in a very epic way. I will not spoil how or why, but you will see him with the ascot. That's all I'll say. Okay, now for some of the other characters. So, uh, Dee Dee Skies, I liked how they utilized her character. I liked that she was kind of like the one that was almost in charge. She was the one that acted in charge, but like wasn't exactly like in the position of being in charge, you know, was supposed to be Blue Falcon, but, like, Dee Dee was taking over the role because Blue Falcon wasn't, you know, and so that was really fun. Uh, she kind of had her sassy moments, too, but it was kind of interesting because it's, like, she wanted to be sassy, but at the same time, she tried, like, not to go too far because she was worried of, like, you know, getting fired or something or kicked off the team, almost. So she was really fun, really enjoyed her character, now, I really hope that we see her in future movies join up with the rest of the Teen Angels. Um, I won't spoil something that happens in the end credits, uh, but something does happen in the end credits that is bringing the whole Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels thing together. Okay, now for the villains, we have Dick Dastardly. He is our villain of the movie and oh my goodness he is just one of my favorite villains of all time now like he felt villainous but he also felt you know like the original cartoon still clumsy somewhat and i loved they brought back his drat they brought back his little you know line of drat and there was there was one part uh, I won't spoil it again. It's not very big, but I was just like, oh my goodness, they're utilizing the drat very well. Now, again, without spoiling, uh, the little robots that we see in the trailers and stuff, oh my goodness, I liked them way more than I thought I would. And again, they are basically Dastardly's minions. Um, that's all I'll say. They're called something really, really cool, and they it calls back to um, basically an old Hanna-Barbera show. That's all I'm gonna say, and I can't spoil it, but the thing that he calls them is like, oh, my heart. <laughs> so there's one scene in particular with Dick Dastardly, well, where he's looking for Scooby-Doo, and you know, he kind of has like this hunchback and whatever, but the way he was walking, like, gave me chills. He's like, where are you, Scooby-Doo? You know, it was just like, 
Oh my goodness, I would be freaked out by you. Now, I will say, they did so well with Dick Dastardly to make him feel villainous and like, you you know, you know he's the bad guy, but also likable, where you, you have these moments where you sympathize for him. And so there's two moments, one kind of in the middle of the movie and one towards the end, I won't spoil, but it made you like, oh my gosh, like, oh, and Dick Dastardly, like, you know, like, you had this moment of, oh my gosh, like, you kind of cheered for him, you know? You kind of had a tear and was like, uh-huh, I won't spoil it. But there's, there's, again, like two moments where they really make you have sympathy for Dick Dastardly, even though he is the villain. Okay, now there are some critiques that I do have with this movie. Some I can't exactly say because it might spoil it. Uh, but I'll basically say this, there's a few minor things that didn't happen in the movie that I'm like, oh, but wait, why didn't that happen? You know, like it's, it's Scooby-Doo 101, you know, where was that? Uh, but there was some things too that they did do that was like, oh my gosh, this is Scooby-Doo 101. Oh my goodness, they're doing this. I won't say what they are because I don't want to spoil it, but when you get to those said parts, you will know exactly and be like, oh, it's happening, you know? So it was really cool how they did utilize these specific Scooby-Doo tropes, you know, within the movie and kind of slid them in more or less. Okay, now again, this movie is supposed to be the start of the Hanna-Barbera Cinematic Universe. And so this movie is filled to the brim with Hanna-Barbera and Scooby-Doo Easter eggs and references. It is like, it is an Easter egg hunt, literally the whole movie. And it is amazing, but like, oh my gosh, you have to like pay attention. There is one that is like super hard to find, but thank you to my friend and we were able to hunt it down and I just won't, I won't say anything else, but there's just lots of Easter eggs. You gotta go through the movie pretty slowly to catch a few of them. Okay, now one thing that I also really enjoyed with this movie is that they use so many classic Hanna-Barbera sound effects. You know, like when they were running, you had the doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, when like someone got like hit or something, I had like the bonk, you know, like, and then like the little stars or swirls, you know, you had the little little anyway i loved they had so many classic Hanna barbera little sound effects that it just it felt right you know in this movie because these are this is Hanna barbera it's just it felt so right now within the specific scooby-doo callback scene uh there are three sounds of villains that i was just like oh <gasps> They added them. They didn't have to, but they added them. One you guys already know is Spooky Space Kook. They got the original laugh track. Um, another, I'm sorry if this is a spoiler. I don't think this is really a spoiler. Uh, Captain Cutler, they had the little eerie tune whenever you see him in the classic episode. You know, the little... I'll, I'll play the clip here. And then the other was Charlie the Haunted Robot. They had his little woo, 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 woo. It just, again, felt right. Okay, so to wrap this up, overall, I loved this movie. It is like, I have watched this movie as of recording this four times now, and I have cried every time. I have cried every time. Not afraid to admit it. I just, this, this movie, is just beautiful. It has made it to my top five favorite Scooby-Doo movies. It knocked down Music of the Vampire. It booted Music of the Vampire out of my top five. Scoob is in my top five favorite Scooby-Doo movies now. So, okay, here's the thing with the reviews and critics. Uh, a, a lot of the reviewers, unfortunately, I haven't seen much modern Scooby-Doo. Uh, you know, so they're just going by classic Scooby-Doo. 
unfortunately. And a lot of them, again, like I said, don't realize that this is supposed to be the beginning of a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe, so it's trying to reintroduce these characters in a new and different way so that they can play around with them within this universe now that they're creating, you know, in fun and different ways. And so, again, unfortunately, they're looking at it as purely a Scooby-Doo movie, and they're thinking of it as, like, no, this doesn't work as a Scooby-Doo movie, whereas, you know, more of the real hardcore fans, not, not all the hardcore fans are going to love this movie. I understand. Not everybody is going to love this movie. I know. But I think more so the fans, the real hardcore fans of Scooby-Doo and, and or Hanna-Barbera are going to appreciate this film a lot more because, again, it has so many callbacks. It has so many references. And we know what this is leading into. So guys, that is my spoiler-free review of Scoob. Overall, I love this movie. It is just mwah. I can't, I can't express how, how freaking lovely this movie is. For those of you that have not seen it, I hope, I hope you guys can watch it very, very soon because it's just so much fun. It is such a fun movie. It is an emotional movie. It just has so much in it. Now, for those that have seen it, again, I'm going to be doing a spoiler-filled review of it so that I can talk more in depth about it. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Um, hopefully, you guys that have seen the movie enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below if you have seen the movie. But please, uh, in this particular video, uh, if you do post comments, do not spoil it for people that have not seen the movie. Um, in my spoiler-filled review, when that one goes out, uh, I'm going to say, put all the spoilers in the comments, uh, because again, why are you watching the spoiler-filled review if you've not seen it, unless you don't care about spoilers, so. So yes, please don't post spoilers in the comments if you have seen it, but uh, I would like to know your overall thoughts on it. So guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Scoob is here. Scoob is alive. Scoob came. And I'll catch you in my next one. Goodbye.